Welcome back to the Green Means Go channel. It's your host, me. We have three pieces of housekeeping before we begin our week four breakdowns and picks. The first is that green glitch you probably just saw is an issue with the editing software I use. I don't want to relearn a new editing software only to have the one I currently use fix the glitch. So we're just riding with it. Good thing Green Means Go is green and it fits the brand. The second thing is this here candle is about to burn out. I asked that you guys help me out. Run me up to 500 subscribers before we switch to a false scent. We are getting close. I'm at 470. Let's see if we can make it happen. If you're not subscribed and you wouldn't mind helping me out, click that there subscribe button, please. And thank you. And the third and final thing is this college slate is fantastic. There are matchups across the board that I love. And so I'm going to give you two official plays right now before we even get into the video that I have my eye on. The first is Florida State minus one and a half on the road at Clemson. I think Florida State is a much better team than Clemson, even though they had a little bit of a scare last week at Boston College. Give me the Seminoles minus one and a half and Finally, Lane Kiffin's Ole Miss Rebels visiting Alabama. The question marks with Alabama. The underperformance from Alabama. Are you kidding me? They're getting seven points on the road. I'll take that every day of the weekend twice on Saturday. Guess what? Tomorrow's Saturday. Give me Ole Miss plus seven. As I was saying, this should be a fantastic week. And before we look at games, we got to talk promos, play them. I'm not screenshotting them all for you as I normally do because there are so many. If you are only using DraftKings, if you are only using FanDuel, get out there and download every book that your state has available. It's the best way to make money. Stop being lazy. Uh, allocate your bankroll across all these apps. Seriously, guys, take advantage of these promos. We won't get them forever. Use them while you can. If you're surprised I'm covering this game, well, you have not been around this channel long enough. Colorado visits Oregon for probably the most watched game of the entire Saturday afternoon slate. It's going to be 71. It's going to be great weather, and I am excited for this game. Hopefully to see Colorado finally lose. Gosh, I'm a hater. Um, looking at the schedule... Obviously, we've watched Colorado all season. We know what their schedule is. They had a scare last week, 24-point favorite, and they have to win in double overtime. Not very convincing. Still, the world rejoiced. As for Oregon, put up 81 against Portland State, had a scare at Texas Tech, and then handled Hawaii pretty easily last week. Looking at the pros, cons, and questions for each team, obviously, Shador Sanders is a pro's pro, and it's the pro of this team. They pass more than most teams they have the fourth most passing attempts in the nation and they are number two in yards the cons however is this team does not run they've kind of just said heck with it we'll let you know what our game plan is and it's to let Shador do his thing now on the opposite side of the ball they allow almost 200 rushing yards per game that's not a good game plan allowing a team to control clock and run the ball down your throat while you risk it all with a pass is not a long-term recipe for success so my question going into this game is what is going to be the game plan from the Colorado Buffaloes? Are they going to take advantage of a somewhat vulnerable Oregon pass, or sorry, Oregon rush defense and run the ball a little more, try to control the clock, try to keep this a lower scoring game than is projected and give themselves a chance to win in the third and fourth quarter? Or are they just going to say, heck with it, let's sling that thing? We'll see. As for the pros for Oregon, 46 points a game and over 500 yards per game is tremendous. Cons are they are allowing almost five rushing yards per attempt. The problem is teams start trailing Oregon and they stop running the ball. So I think that is a matchup that Colorado could exploit should they choose to, but will they? I am not sure. And my question is, will this team try to prove a point? I think Oregon has the weapons, has the team, has the matchup to win this game by 35 points. But will they? Uh, will they? Will, will, will they? I don't know. So we shall see come Saturday. As for the numbers, we've seen Colorado at this number before in week one. I think it's a little different matchup, TCU and Oregon here. And their spread is 21. Now, when this game ended last week, Colorado, Colorado State, I looked and it was Oregon minus 17 and a half. I actually hit that for my max on FanDuel. And this line moved with the Travis Hunter injury and other, uh, obviously, uh, other news that has come out. Now, I'm a little bit of a baby. I did not let the value ride. I cashed it out. FanDuel was giving me 50 bucks on the cash out. I took my 50 bucks and I moved on just because uh, Colorado, man, just because Colorado, I don't know what they're going to do. Uh, over under a 70 and a half. I'm not touching that either. I think Oregon puts up 45, but again, I don't know what Colorado is going to come in and do this game. As for bets I like, we are 8-9 and nine on the channel, up 1.4 units, which is a 9% ROI. I'm going to go with Dylan Edwards over 35.5 rush yards. I'm going to put a little faith in Deion Sanders and 
what I will call his brilliance, and I'm going to hope that they see the matchup is exploitable on the running game. So Dylan Edwards over 35 and a half rushing yards. That's not a high total. Let's see if we can hit that. I think it's a solid bet given what I expect the game script to be. Then we're going to jump over here to this bet. Jordan James to score a touchdown. He is the Oregon running back coupled with Bucky Irving and Noah Winningham. It's kind of a triple headed monster there, but Jordan James seems to get a lot of red zone work. He has five touchdowns this year. So for him to score a plus 110, I think there's value against this pretty, pretty bad Colorado run defense. We saw Nebraska take advantage of that. Now, these other three bets are a little bizarre because they are on FanDuel only and they're under a tab labeled College Football Player Specials. Jimmy Horn to record 25 receiving yards in each half I think is a great bet at plus 200 with Travis Hunter out. With this team probably going to screw me over on this bet and just pass the ball, I think 25 is well within the realm of possibilities for Jimmy Horn to record in the first and second half. And Shador Sanders to have a passing touchdown in each, each half at plus 195. Again, guys, the total is at is at um, 70 and a half. Colorado's projected 23 and a half points, so three touchdowns. So give me Shador Sanders, a touchdown in each half. I don't think they're going to run the ball in. So I like that bet at two to one almost. And then Bucky Irving, 50 rush yards in each half for the Oregon Ducks. The game log doesn't necessarily support this, guys. Bucky Irving does not typically get a ton of yards, which I think is weird because he's getting the most carries. But Again, looking at the game script, I think Oregon is going to have their way on the ground. They're going to be able to exploit the gaps and the trenches. So give me Bucky Irving to have 50 rush yards in each half at plus 650. Tremendous value there. Now for the game in South Bend, we have a night game, which is not super popular in Notre Dame. They don't get a ton of night games, or at least they haven't um, in the history of their team. 80 degrees, sun will be down. It'll be perfect. Looking at the schedules for these teams, Ohio State only plays red teams. So this will be their first test against a team that is not red. They looked horrible against Indiana, scoring 23 points, but they did only allow three. Youngstown State, who the heck is that? I don't know, but they only won by 28 in that game. And Western Kentucky was the game they looked the best in last week, but... Is, are we impressed by it? Because I am not. As for Notre Dame, they played in Week 0, so they have an extra game in their schedule. The one thing I will point out to you is that they've scored quite a bit in every game, and NC State was their toughest matchup on the road. They were only a 7-point favorite in that game, um, and I think it trickled down even less. It got under that touchdown before kickoff, and they won by 21, so pretty impressive victory there. As for the pros, cons, and questions... Ohio State has the number two ranked defense. That's their pro, but at what cost? Again, who's young? Who's Youngstown State? Please tell me one player on that team. Um, so I don't think this statistic is necessarily backed by a lot of convincing uh, opponents. So I'm not reading too much into it. Now, something that scares me a bit is their cons. They've allowed 100% red, red zone scoring, which means every point, every time a team gets into the red zone, this defense allows them to score points. Not a great recipe. Um, now, a lot of those were field goals, but still. Um, and finally, they are outside the top 20 in all passing statistics. So you have Marvin Harrison, you have Abuka, you have Julian Fleming, you have Cade Stover. But more importantly, you have Kyle McCord. And I'm not impressed with Kyle McCord. I don't think he is the guy in Ohio State. I don't think he's anyone's guy. I don't think he's that he He's booty cheeks, McFinnigan, stinky, stinky doo-doo water, okay? Kyle McCord can't play and he's not going to be able to play against Notre Dame book it all right so my question is can Kyle McCord play I don't think so and I don't think this night game in South Bend against a team that has the length the athleticism the defensive game plan to stop these wide receivers more than they've been stopped all year I mean if Indiana held them in check Notre Dame's going to be able to do it so will they lean on the rush I do think Notre Dame's one vulnerability in the defense is rushing. So if they get Williams and they get Henderson going, I think that's the best chance they have to win the game. As for Notre Dame, pros, obviously, we saw 40 points a game, but again, not the toughest opponents. But I do think this is the most talented Notre Dame roster we've seen in a decade. I think they're tremendously balanced with Estime, with uh, Sam Hartman. So, uh, you know, I, I just think they are much stronger in that way in this game. 
Obviously, the cons are their strength of schedule, have not played a true test outside of NC State. And at times, they've been vulnerable in the rushing, but it's kind of like Oregon. They go up pretty early in games, and teams throw away the rushing attack. So I that, that's, I think, the matchup to watch in this game is Ohio State's rushing against Notre Dame's rushing defense. And my question is, can they force Kyle McCord to have to win the game? I think if they put eight in the box and they stop the run and they make Kyle McCord have long third downs, Notre Dame wins this game. As for the numbers, this shocks me. This surprises me. Ohio State on the road, proving nothing to me so far this year as a minus 145 favorite. I like Notre Dame in this game. I think Notre Dame is the side with value. Again, three points here on the game spread. I wouldn't be shocked if this trickles to two and a half by kickoff, guys. I don't know why it hasn't moved yet. I predicted it would move down to two and a half. It hasn't. And finally, 55 and a half as the total. I think these totals are really accurate. I'm not touching anything there, at least in the full game. But I will explain what I am touching right here. Pause. Is Notre Dame to win the first half in under 27 and a half points? Here's why I like this bet. It is almost plus 300. I think Notre Dame comes out and they load the box. They trust their corners and their defensive backs to contain this powerful wide receiving core because McCord has not looked that sharp. So they say, we're going to stop the run and we're going to force you into long third downs and passing downs where we can then lay off a little bit and help. I think that's Notre Dame's best chance to win. So I see this first half being something like 14-3, 14-10. So that is what I like there. I like Notre Dame to win the game outright at plus 133. Again, value, value, value. I think that has tremendous, tremendous value. And I'm I'm, I could be very wrong. I could be missing something. And if I am, please drop it in the comments what I'm missing about this Ohio State team, but they have not convinced me of anything this year. I think Notre Dame has not been getting the press and publicity that they deserve for what they've done. So I think after this game, they do. And finally, for my 30% profit boost over on FanDuel, I'm going to run this $10 plus 2100 bet for Holden Stays and Jaden Greathouse both to find the end zone. This is Notre Dame's tight end and Notre Dame's leading receiver. They have five touchdowns and three touchdowns respectively on the season. I don't know, guys. I just think that this, this is a great value play for two guys that Sam Harton looks too often in the red zone. We know Ohio State's red zone defense has been vulnerable at times. Lock it in. As always, guys, I appreciate you stopping by. A subscribe goes a long way. We're trying to run it up, baby. Help me run it up. Lock in on these games. Enjoy the Saturday. And by golly, we'll see you around soon.